Day three of Dr. Soloway's lecture series on autoimmunity, positive ANA, and how to try and differentiate the rheumatoid arthritis from Sjogren's syndrome and lupus. So what do these diseases have in common? They have autoimmunity, and autoimmunity is a positive ANA or anti-nuclear antibody, and then we have other tests that are often confusing. We have a double-stranded DNA, we have a rheumatoid factor, we have the CCP antibody, we have SSA, SSB, we have an ENA panel, which is RNP or ribonucleoprotein and S small m for Smith antibody. We don't want to confuse this with S big M for smooth muscle antibody. Many people think this and hear of it, but confuse it frequently. I hope that after I explain this, you will not do that. We have other antibodies. We have what are called phospholipid antibodies. Phospholipids, while they're present in one-third of SLE or lupus patients, they also have their own disease called antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, which is characterized by, and I realize I'm going out of order, it would be characterized by early miscarriages, one first trimester or two second trimester miscarriages, along with a positive phospholipid antibody, will earn you the diagnosis of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. The other tests appropriate here Um, to consider when ordering your screening for autoimmunity um, should take into account that there are are several tests that can be ordered. There are the lupus anticoagulant, and when people hear lupus anticoagulant, they think they have lupus. In fact, what they have is an elevation in the um, DR... VVT, and the importance here is RVVT, Russell Viper Venom Time, and the Russell Viper is actually from the Russell Viper snake. So an elevated lupus anticoagulant is one of the three phospholipid antibodies. The second phospholipid antibody is called the um, beta-2 glycoproteins. There is an IgG, an IgM, and an IgA beta-2 glycoprotein. My handwriting is horrendous, but hopefully my voice is clear. If you have either miscarriages if you have thrombocytopenia or low platelets, or if you have blood clot requiring anticoagulation with beta-2 glycoproteins positive or lupus anticoagulant elevated, you have earned yourself a diagnosis of the phospholipid antibody syndrome. Third and finally, there are the actual phospholipid antibodies. And they do come in a variety. The phospholipid antibodies are frequently referred to as simply phospholipid antibodies. And they are also looked at under the category of lupus anticoagulant. One to name that is not very commonly known is called phosphatidylserine. When the phosphatidylserine IgM is two, three, or four times the upper limit of normal, this phospholipid antibody will also earn you the diagnosis of phospholipid antibody syndrome when seen in conjunction with the three disease states or problems that I just mentioned, which included early trimester miscarriage, low blood count of platelets under 100,000, and 
clotting such as a DVT or leg thrombosis or pulmonary embolus PE. Okay, I went off track a little bit, but hopefully you'll find that helpful. Switching pages, we're going to get back to what is called a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram is this. This Venn diagram is meant to illustrate that there is overlap between conditions. So here we have lupus, here we have rheumatoid arthritis, and here we have Sjogren's disease. So, it's easy to understand that if all three conditions can have arthritis, then a person can have an overlap between lupus and rheumatoid, a patient can have an overlap between rheumatoid and Sjogren's, or between Sjogren's and lupus, and there are people who can have features of all three. So what are some features of all three and how do we differentiate this? Well, we have our blood tests that we discussed. And if you have an ANA with a positive double-stranded DNA, along with arthritis, you probably have lupus. If you have arthritis with a positive rheumatoid factor and CCP antibody, you probably have rheumatoid arthritis. And if you have arthritis with a positive rheumatoid factor, SSA and SSB, you might have Sjogren's. However, if a patient has a positive ANA, DNA, rheumatoid factor, and CCP, they, along with their arthritis, might be referred to as an overlap syndrome. There are ways to differentiate. In fact, lupus gives a non-erosive arthritis, while rheumatoid arthritis gives an erosive arthritis. So, upon x-ray reading, if there are erosions, then that person probably has rheumatoid arthritis with lupus antibodies rather than an overlap. This is just an example of how things in rheumatology can be very confusing. It should also be noted that in addition to arthritis, dry mouth and dry eyes can occur in lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and Sjogren's. They are therefore sensitive but not specific problems. So what would be something more specific? Well, we can talk about lung disease. However, again, we run into the same problem. Lupus, rheumatoid, and Sjogren's patients all can have interstitial lung disease. However, rheumatoid arthritis will give lung nodules. Lupus and Sjogren's more likely will not. The conditions can have low platelet count. In lupus, it'll be from antiplatelet antibodies. In Sjogren's, it'll be from a big spleen eating the platelets. And in rheumatoid arthritis, if a patient were to have low platelets, it might be from side effects of one of the medications. There are many other organs involved. In fact, Sjogren's, while it is typically an exocrine gland dysfunction, and exocrine means the glands that push fluid or secretions out of the body, such as tears and saliva, we can have extra glandular features of Sjogren's, which can include peripheral neuropathy, which means burning, tingling, and numbness or weakness. We can have brain involvement. We can have lung disease. We can have kidney disease. In fact, the kidney disease of Sjogren's is typically what is called tubular which leads to what is called renal tubular acidosis, or an elevated urine pH. This is distinctly different than lupus kidney disease, which does not involve the tubule exclusively, but involves the glomerulus, which can lead to protein and blood in the urine. And the kidney finding of rheumatoid arthritis is called amyloidosis in a very long-standing rheumatoid patient, period. If you find a patient with rheumatoid arthritis and they have a load of protein in the urine and it's a chronic disease, you need to consider biopsying and looking for amyloidosis. I hope you enjoyed this mini-series on autoimmunity. If you have further questions or anything you'd like me to address, I would be more than happy. Thank you and good night.